What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. A question I get asked all the time is how should I set up my cardio program for motocross? And in today's video, we're actually going to cover step by step how to make the perfect cardio program for motocross. All right, let's get into it. Now keep in mind, this is part two to a previous video that I made on my channel. So if you are just finding my channel for the first time, I will put that video in a card up on the screen. Make sure you watch that video. It covers all the basics of cardio, what it is, breaks down all the different zones, and then come back to this video to learn a little bit more. All right, so let's get right into it. First important question is how often do you ride? If you're already riding four to five days per week at the high end, like here at MTF, we ride four or five days every week. That's going to change how much cardio we need to introduced to our program in order to make up for you know what other people are doing because what's the main reason we do cardio we want improved fitness on the bike we want to be able to last just as long as our competition or ideally longer than our competition so that you know we can be stronger towards the end of the moto so we have to look at how many days am i riding if i'm only riding one day per week or even less you're going to need more cardio than somebody who's riding four days per week or three days per week okay so that's a very important First step is figure out how often are you prepared to ride, and that's gonna tell us a little bit more about how many cardio sessions we have to put in. Riding is cardio. I want you guys to really understand that riding is cardio, but it's sport-specific cardio, and I'll talk more about that here in a moment. And while riding is cardio, it's not the only kind of cardio that you need to be sort of a well-rounded athlete. All right, so let's break down the two types of cardio that you're gonna need for motocross. We have our sport-specific cardio, and what does that mean? Sport-specific cardio basically means that the exact duration and intensity, how long and how hard are, is your body going to have to work in a moto, right? So for the average person that's racing amateur, it's going to be maybe high zone four, low zone five for 10 to 15 minutes. I'd say that's a pretty average amateur race except for maybe Loretta's and that's going to be a 20-minute race, right? And then all the way on the professional side of things, you're looking at 30 minutes plus two laps twice. So you have probably 70 minutes, 75 minutes of high zone four, high zone five, or low zone five. That's your sport specific. That's the type of cardio that is almost impossible to replicate in the gym or on a road bike or on a rower. The best way to get that cardio is by riding. Now, the other type of cardio is what I call base building cardio. Base building cardio is going to be that low intensity cardio that you do for a long period of time. And it has lots and lots of benefits that actually just makes your body better equipped to handle all types of cardio. Okay, so a couple of those benefits would be it develops your cardio engine. So basically what that means is you want a V8 as your starting point, right? Eight cylinder engine, what you see in a typical sports car, you want that as opposed to the Honda Accord four cylinder engine that your potential in a four cylinder small engine is so much lower than somebody who's got a V8, right? So you want to start out with the, the best, most powerful engine you can possibly get. You get that by doing lots of base building cardio. This also supports your body in a number of ways through physical adaptations, right? So it, it produces more mitochondria. Does anybody know what mitochondria means? If you were in seventh, seventh grade science, I want to say, they had that thing where it was mighty mitochondria. No? Yeah, I feel ridiculous every time I try to make that joke in front of our, our live camps and anytime I give this presentation to a group of people. But you know what? I'm just going to keep trying until it lands. Could be next week. Could be three years from now. Could be never. But our body produces more mitochondria, which is the cell that is the only cell capable of producing energy. So if we could choose to have more cells that create energy, don't you think that'd be a good thing? I think so. So it improves the number of mitochondria. It also improves our capillary density. Now what capillaries do is it's the, the part of your blood vessel that delivers blood to the muscles. Now blood is responsible for bringing in nutrients and oxygen, all this good stuff. And it's also responsible for taking away waste and carbon dioxide and these things that make us feel this burn, right? And the lactic acid. So better blood flow means better nutrient and oxygen delivery. And it also means better waste removal. Right, so we get the good stuff in, we get the bad stuff out. It also helps us increase our muscle efficiency. Whatever movement pattern you're doing, whether it's riding, running, cycling, rowing, swimming, doesn't matter. Whatever you practice for long periods of time, your body's gonna naturally get more efficient. 
right? Your muscles learn how to operate through that movement pattern better than they did before. So that's just already going to help you be more efficient, more energy efficient, and it's going to improve your endurance uh, just like that. So what should I do? How should I put together a program to complement my riding? Well, if you're serious about your fitness goals, you want to improve your fitness, you want to get better on the bike, and you're willing to commit some time and effort to doing so, I would recommend doing four to six sessions per week. Three to four of those sessions should be base building, zone two, and the other one to two sessions should be high intensity interval training or some type of threshold training. If you guys aren't sure what to do for high intensity interval training or the threshold training, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. That sounds like a lot of training sessions. We'll talk about that here in a moment. If you're less serious, if you just want to feel a little bit better on the bike, you're not willing to put in hours and hours and, and do four to six sessions per week, I'd say as a bare minimum, you should be doing two to three sessions per week. Now, if I were you, if you're riding on the weekends, I would make all two to three of those just base building. They're a little easier to do. They don't take so much away from you. And if you're working or going to school full time, it's easier to get through those than it is to get through high intensity interval training or threshold training. So if you're less serious about your fitness and you just want to do the bare minimum to make sure you feel okay when you get to ride, two to three sessions, two to three sessions per week, all of them base building, or if you don't ride at all that week, you can make one of them into a high intensity interval or a threshold training. Now, this changes a little bit if you ride two to three times per week. If that's you, I would recommend you cut one of the high intensity sessions and still strive for three to four base building sessions per week. Now, things to consider. Four to six sessions per week is a lot. And that means you're definitely going to have to do cardio on a day that you ride. This is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, you have to be careful where you put your energy. And so my general rule of thumb is that whichever activity you care more about is what you should do first that day. Now, I understand that there's always going to be people that say, hey, I can only ride from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and that's when my local track is open. I get it. I understand. In a perfect world, if you can choose when you ride and when you do your cardio, I would 100% put the riding first. All the gym side of any gym workout you're going to do, cardio, lifting, stretching, anything is meant to be complementary to the riding. If your riding is not top notch, all of your effort and the highest quality training out of everything that you do, you won't see the best progress as the, you know, the person who is putting it first. So whichever activity you care more about, that's what you should do first. If you care more about your cardio, do that before you ride. If you care more about your riding, which I assume is most people watching this video, you should do your cardio after riding. Now, if you are lifting weights as well, I would highly, highly recommend that you separate your sessions. Now, I'm not talking by minutes. I'm talking about hours. So if you think about what you're doing for each adaptation, lifting is teaching your body to produce a lot of force in a very short amount of time, and it doesn't matter if you fatigue quickly. So your body thinks, okay, I need to be able to produce a lot of force, I need to do it for a short period of time, and then I get plenty of rest. And then you think about what cardio is telling your body to do. It's saying we need to produce a small to medium amount of force over a long period of time, I don't really get any rest. So those adaptations directly conflict with each other. So if you do your cardio and go straight into a lift, you're basically taking less of each adaptation. You're going to see less progress from both unless you can separate the sessions by hours. So what I mean by that is I would do one session in the morning, whichever one you care more about, and then do the other session in the afternoon. I would say probably four to six hours in between would be best case scenario. I understand not everybody will have the schedule flexibility to make that happen, but if you do, that's what I recommend. Convenience is always going to be less important than your progress. I know that everybody wants to just show up to the gym, do their workout, and then go straight into their cardio. They're only at the gym for an hour and a half total. I get it. You don't have to go to the gym once. If you want to get the absolute most out of your training, the details like this absolutely matter. So how long should my base cardio sessions be? My general rule of thumb is make it longer than your race duration. Think back to any time you see a podium interview from you know, one of the professionals. They just got doing, done doing 30 minutes plus two laps. 
and they take their helmet off. Yes, they get some water and they're starting to pour some water down the back or whatever to only jumpstart the recovery for the second moto. But then when you talk to them, they're just answering questions calmly. They're not like, oh my God, I'm dying. Get my gear off me. I need to sit down. They're tired because they leave it all out on the track, but they could have gone much longer, right? So even when the race is 30 minutes plus two laps, they do at least 35 minute motos, and then they're doing like hour and a half cycles, two hour cycles. Some teams even do three hour cycles. So don't overthink it. Just make sure you're going longer than your race is going to demand from you, and you'll be as prepared as you can be. I would also say that you should go long enough to challenge you. If, if cycling or going for a 20 minute jog is just not that hard, why do it? Like if, if it's not hard, it's probably not worth doing. If it's not hard, it's not going to make you better. So find ways to challenge yourself, whether it's the intensity, how many sessions per week. Um, you should notice that the more you do this, the harder you can push at the same heart rate, right? That's a, a mark of increased fitness is, you know, say you're jogging on the treadmill and I used to have mine down to a T where I could hop on the treadmill, put it on six miles an hour, my heart rate would come up perfectly to 125, 128. Well, then eventually over time, the more I did that, I would hop on the treadmill, I would push it to six miles an hour, and my heart rate only got to 119. Okay, I mean, that's a good thing, but now I have to run faster to get my heart rate up to 125. Maybe I had to go to seven miles an hour or 7.5. That's a good thing, but that doesn't just happen on its own. You have to push yourself either in intensity, duration, or how often you do the cardio. And last thing about the duration of your cardio sessions, you should aim for a duration that makes it feel fun, but you also have to accept that it's not always gonna feel fun. Really high performers, like the elite endurance athletes at the tippy top, especially in motocross, understand that a lot of the work that they have to put in is long, boring, and, and very monotonous. But they're okay with that level of boredom because they know it's creating the adaptations in their body that they need to be successful. If they want to have the best endurance, they need to go sit on that road bike for two hours, three hours, whatever the, whatever the trainers have them do, and that's going to give them the confidence to know that I'm doing exactly what I need to do for my body to be in the best physical shape it can possibly be. If your excuse for not doing cardio is that it's too boring, it just means you don't care enough about the adaptation, you don't care enough about being fit, and you don't want to be more fit to ride the dirt bike. Plain and simple. But also, it's nice when you find a type of cardio that you actually enjoy. Like, I love to run. I think it's great. I don't know if it's as practical for motocross, given how much you have to do it. But if I get the chance to go do some cardio, I like to go for a jog. Some people like to road cycle. Some people like to swim. So find what works for you. And then just apply this session method and time method um, and, and make it work for you. So that you can at least enjoy it a little bit, right? You may have more questions. If you have more questions, you should join MTF Online. We created online training programs. We basically take what we do here in person at MTF and we put it online for you guys to have access to. So I'll put a link in the description to the website. Check it out. Consider doing it. It's a pain in the butt writing your own programs. I get it. Um, if you guys have any more questions, put it down in the comments. And also, if you have any topics you want me to cover in future videos, put that in the comments as well. Um, I'm looking for new content ideas, and I really want this new push on YouTube to be all about making moto simple. I want to explain this in terms that everybody can understand. I see other people getting really sciencey and breaking down the biochemistry of supplements, and, and I just think that that's not very useful for the average person that's just trying to get better you know, fitness, better strength, and, and better skills on the dirt bike. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos on my channel. We got more like this one coming. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.